I'm now pleased to introduce to you Guido Oppenzeller. Uh, Guido also got his PhD in this program at Stanford. Um, he is the one who produced OpenFlow 1.0, which is the widely, most widely implemented version of OpenFlow. Um, got his PhD with Nick. Previously, he was uh, CTO at Voltage uh, Security. Uh, he is now CEO of Big Switch Networks. So he's always been an innovator, deciding this is the direction I want to go. I'm going there. Don't stop me. Um, and as a uh, CEO of a company that spends a lot of time with a variety of, of customers, um, he brings a, a very hands-on, tangible perspective on what will sell, what needs they can actually solve from enterprise users. So please welcome Guido Oppenzeller. Super. Uh, thank you, Dan. Um, he forgot to mention it actually turns out I'm not SDN certified. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so at Big Switch Networks, we're essentially building uh, a platform um, that allows enterprises to use SDN in their networks. And uh, one of our key value propositions is that with our platform, you can virtualize your network. So what I want to do is share some thoughts uh, and some experiences um, from, from our interaction with customers and on what it means to virtualize networks and, and what we've learned. So, so currently in the data center, um, there's a lot of change going on. Um, and uh, this is a very busy slide here, and I think you've seen many of the, the major topics and other slides already today. But um, the, 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 big, the biggest trend of all, and, and this is old news, is uh, server virtualization. It has completely changed the OPEX calculus um, on the compute side, um, but it's now bleeding over on the network, to the networking side. Uh, just to give some sample statistics here, um, this is from a financial institution that, that I recently talked to. You know, in their case, about 35% of all servers are virtualized. Uh, they're hoping to get that over 50% uh, in, in within three years. Of the new servers that are coming online, over 60% are already virtualized. So we're looking sort of at a, at a mixed environment, but, but uh, virtualization is definitely the trend. Um, the, the networking, uh, the, the part of what virtualization um, does is that the network is now split over switches um, that are living in the hypervisor, hypervisor switches like vSwitch from VMware or Open vSwitch, um, and the physical switches, which makes management of your network a lot more challenging because suddenly, you ha usually, these two are not integrated and you have to manage them through different um, mechanisms. Um, another major change is that the application teams that roll out applications uh, in your data center, they're no longer uh, you know, one, one machine that's just connected to the network, but they basically want to shape how their network looks like. You might have a multi-tier application, you know, with firewalls in between, and that makes things much, much harder because suddenly, you know, the, the central networking department has to reconfigure the network every time a couple of new virtual machines are coming online. And, and last but not least, there's this trend towards uh, private clouds, which means, uh, you know, you want a, a more of a self-service infrastructure where basically an employee can go to a portal, uh, reserve uh, a couple of servers and the network in between them, and, uh, and, and configure that without even uh, human intervention. Uh, so some other trends, the traffic patterns have changed. It used to be all north-south, meaning from the, from the servers uh, to the gateway. Um, uh, it's more and more east-west, meaning between servers because of multi-tier applications, Hadoop clusters, and, and these kind of things. And then we're also seeing scale changes. And there's not so much scale in terms of bandwidth. I mean, bandwidth is going up, no question. But it's, it's scale in terms of, uh, as, as Ken pointed out earlier, I suddenly have you know, a very large number of MAC addresses, or you know, I, have, uh, more, I have more tenants than I have VLANs, so we're seeing exhaustion issues um, in those areas. So what does it mean for the network? Um, on the network side, um, I have virtualized server infrastructure, and I want virtualized networking infrastructure. That's sort of the higher order bit. The, once I have that, I would like to delegate this out. Um, I want APIs so I can automate it. I don't want to do everything manually if I can avoid it. Um, I would like to have one controller management plane to, do, to manage both the hypervisor and the, and the physical network. Yeah. Um, and I want to cope with like, more complex topologies, and uh, you know, I want to have broadcast domain isolation. This is just a laundry list. And if you, so if you might be wondering, okay, that's a nice set of requirements. Do, do I really need this? What happens if I just ignore this and try to do things the way um, that I've been doing it so far? Um, so we did a sort of mini survey of a, a couple of our customers and asked them, if you're going from a classic, classical colo model with you know, physical service to a private cloud where basically you have complete self-provisioning, um, what's the effect on the number of change requests that come into your networking uh, department if you, if you don't change anything? And the answer is it goes up by a fairly large factor. So if you're, if you're trying to scale this, right, the, the number of VMs that are being, being started up in the enterprise is going up and up and up, you either have to hire more and more, and more network administrators or you have to do something differently. And that's sort of where network virtualization comes in. Now, let me define what network virtualization is. Um, this is a quote from Packet Push's blog, which, which I think is great. I mean, at this point, you know, virtual networking is, is very, very widely used and means different things to different people. Uh, when we talk about virtualization, network virtualization, 
what we're thinking of is basically you have a simple architecture, uh, network architecture, you know, you have a routed core, you have basically an aggregation in the top of rack layer, there might be hypervisor switches here too somewhere. And uh, so in this, in this topology, we have different applications. So I have a blue application here, a green application, and a red application. And they all have certain servers, they might be physical, they might be VMs. So what, what I want to do with network virtualization is I want to take, you know, the servers of one application, basically map them to a thing, to a virtual switch, you know, or a virtual network, uh, we like to just think of this virtual thing as one switch because it makes things very, very simple and intuitive. And uh, you know, do the same, the same uh, with the other applications. And then I want to go ahead and take the switch and delegate it out uh, to the, the team that runs the application. So I, as the network, as my, the, the person, the networking team, don't have to worry about it anymore. So this is the goal we're trying to achieve. Doing network virtualization is very, very hard if you try it in a fully distributed way. So if you do it with, with separate switches where every switch runs, runs its own software. Just think about, you know, if I remove or add a tenant, does it have to update every switch? If, you know, if VMs move around, how would I notice, you know, how, how do I reconfigure them? Um, if you look at sort of, hum, sort of the, the, the classic non-SDN virtualization mechanisms that we have, uh, they pretty much always require additional information to be tagged onto the packet, right? So something like a VLAN tag to, to separate traffic in MPLS. Um, and even outside so the typical SDN, um, there are actually some, some centralized controllers that are creeping in uh, to the way we run networks. So for example, VMware's distributed vSwitch effectively has a centralized controller. And same with the Nexus 1000B, effectively has a centralized controller that manages a couple of the, the actual kernel modules um, that go into the hypervisors. So, so I think the, we're, what we've learned is that SDN is a fantastic approach for building network virtualization. So another huge advantage of SDN is that it makes it much, much easier to integrate your other applications with your network. Uh, so imagine you want to build a private cloud. Uh, what you really like to get to is to have a single console that allows you to configure both your compute uh, and your network and uh, provision everything from there. Um, and you want to automate that as much as possible just to reduce the overhead. So if you're doing this with basically lots of separate switches. Let's assume you want to do something very simple, like attaching an ACL to a virtual machine, right? This is pretty hard. I mean, you know, if, if you're lucky, you somewhere have a central database where you could query which switch is this particular host connected to. Um, then you can basically fetch that information, connect to that particular switch, ACL it on the switch. But then this virtual machine might get moved around by the hypervisor somewhere else, and they basically have to redo all of that and, and have to reconnect to it. Um, if you're having a controller platform in between, you basically just go to the controller platform, say the controller platform, here's a MAC address and here's an ACL list, map the MAC list to the MAC, uh, to the MAC address, uh, and you're done. You don't have to think about it anymore. If the virtual machine moves, the platform will take care of you for it. And that's just a simple case, right? There's, there's more complex ones. Like, for example, I want to ask the question, how much bandwidth do I have between host A and host B right now? Right? That's a very, very difficult question in a distributed network. Uh, or you know, think about rollback mechanisms. So I'm trying to do a couple of changes, and if, I, if one of them fails, I want to roll back to the previous state. Right? Again, if I have lots of distributed switches, very, very difficult to do, much, much easier with SDN. So another key thing that we're seeing is the, the capability to delegate. Um, if, if I'm an architect, I want to think about the network in a certain way. Right? I want to see everything. I want to know what's happening physically. I want to see all the switches. Um, the team administrator who's worrying about a particular application wants to have a very different view. So, so if our model is, is, is a model where basically the network architect can say, I pick a couple of end hosts, I map them to what we call a virtual switch, and then we can delegate out that virtual switch. But the actual day-to-day -day administration of this virtual network can be done by somebody else who has only very, very limited privileges and who basically is in a sandbox and can only change things uh, on, on this particular network. The key value proposition that comes out from all of that is basically a, 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 a big reduction in the overhead that it takes to, to manage your network. So I talked to, to one um, uh, CIO of a, of a medical center who basically said every time uh, he's spinning up a new virtual machine in his data center, you know, which takes 30 minutes or so, uh, with all overhead included, it takes about a network administrator about two, uh, two days to re echo all the switches in the network to basically get, get everything back into compliance. Right? You know, so HIPAA compliance and you know, a couple of other compliance regula regulations that they have. And you know, with a solution like this, I think you can drastically, uh, drastically reduce that. So another thing that we learned is um, there's very different approaches in terms of how you actually do the software-defined networking. So we have a centralized controller. We have a network. So in this case, we have uh, you know, a, a fairly simple network. It's basically a couple of virtualized servers, two physical servers. We have top-of-rack switches. We have some spine aggregation switches on top. You know, if you have a more traditional model, you might just have one switch up there. You know, in the more modern architectures, you have a couple of them. 
And, um, and now I want to do SDN. How, how can I do this? And there's a couple of places where you can, play, where you can basically enable SDN. So one approach is to say, let's just enable SDN in the, in the hypervisor switches. So take open B switch, um, you know, connect it to your controller. Um, in this case, you do most things with tunneling. So basically, if, if one host wants to talk to another host, you set up a tunnel between the two. You can do these stateless, so they're, they're pretty efficient. And um, you, you just tunnel over uh, the infrastructure uh, and that's, that's above you. And it's actually pretty attractive because it means you don't have to change anything about the network. Right? Your, your classical physical network can run the same configuration that, that you run before. Um, the, the downside with this is, and, and there's actually some markets where I think this works great. Right? If you have a completely homogeneous infrastructure, um, you know, it's, it's something that's worth looking at. Um, in the enterprise, the problem with that is, first of all, what do I do with physical servers? Right? Um, I, I somehow need a way to terminate those tunnels so I can still tie the physical servers into my virtual topologies um, that I'm creating. Um, but there's other problems. For example, if I have this kind of tunneling on the hypervisor approach, uh, I send out a packet on a hypervisor, and it doesn't come out on the other side, then, then what do I do? Right? It's, it's very, very hard to debug these things. Uh, I can basically go to a different management console and try to debug the network and try to replicate what's happening, um, but it's, it's, it's very hard to, to, to build this in. Uh, you know, similar things if I have a QoS problem. Right? I'm seeing long, large packet delay, a packet being sent out by a hypervisor switch to, to another hypervisor switch, it's very, it's very hard for me to tell what is causing this or, or what the reason is um, for this to happen. So in the enterprise, it, it may work, um, but th there's cases where it doesn't work. Um, what tends to work a lot better is if you're basically taking a combination of hypervisor switches and top of rack switches. So in this case, you have uh, your hypervisor switches are enabled with some kind of software-defined networking protocol, your top of rack switches, so physical switches are enabled, software-defined networking. This gives you a couple of additional degrees of freedom. So first of all, um, you know, the, you can now choose do you want to tunnel or not, because you know, in, in this case, you actually don't have to tunnel. It's, it's still an option, but instead you can, for example, uh, just use the, the top of rack switches to, to distribute the traffic over the, the next layer above and, and then filter it back down. Um, and the second thing is it gives you a lot more visibility in what's happening in your network. You know, the, the top of rack switches are now under your control. You can see delays. You can you know, send probing packets, so it's, uh, you tend to know a lot better what's going on. Last but not least, your physical servers now are trivial to integrate. Right? They, you can just add them to a virtual network the same way um, as you would have done it uh, before. So then one, one very last comment. There was, I think, a lot of, it seems like a lot of discussion about OpenFlow versus SDN uh, here, here at the company. And to me, that's just uh, the wrong question. So um, what I have here to, the, to write is an image of a switch, the, the way we look at it. <laughs> Uh, so for switch for us has you know a number of different tools we can use in order to build an SDN solution. Um, you know you have OpenFlow is one of them. Um, there's other methods. Uh, you know it could be vendor extensions. It could be things we can do via SNMP. Uh, you know in some cases um, potentially going in the with the shell directly. Um, but you know the the at the end of the day um, you know any good I think SDN solution that you'll find out there will probably use any tool that's at their disposition, and uh, you know to, together in order to 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 build uh, uh, networks. The the one caveat here is standards matter. Um, so what we're hearing a lot from our customers is they're worried about vendor lock-in. Right? This is a very early, uh, it's very early um, stage in the industry. Um, you don't want to go with a solution where it's difficult to switch. And OpenFlow right now is the only protocol that's, that's widely sta standardized. You know, the onus is obviously on, on Dan here to, to, to change that and uh, you know, um, add, add new things to that. But it's something sort of, you know, that, that we're paying a lot of attention to. As we think, at least in the enterprise, it'll, it'll uh, affect adoption. That's all I had. Thank you. Yeah.